In this video, we're going to show you three different ways to connect the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface to your subwoofer and powered studio monitors in your home studio. In this video, we're using the Atom Audio T10S powered subwoofer and the Atom Audio T5V powered studio monitors. This is the setup that I use at my desk on a regular basis. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, the speakers, the sub, the interface, any of the cables that we show you in this video, we have links down in the description below where you can find everything you see here from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Now in this video, we're going to show you three different ways to connect everything here. But before we do that, you need to understand the difference between a balanced and an unbalanced cable. An unbalanced cable should not be run more than 10 feet. It's more susceptible to noise and static. Sometimes they can pick up radio stations. But when you're in a studio environment with magnets and speakers and computers and processors, a lot of electromagnetic interference around, it is susceptible to having the audio degraded over an unbalanced cable. Two examples of an unbalanced cable would be an RCA jack or RCA cable and a TS quarter inch cable, an unbalanced quarter inch cable. You can see here I have two quarter inch jacks in the palm of my hand. One of them has two sections. It has the tip and the sleeve. This is known as a TS or unbalanced quarter inch jack. These are not as good to run over a long distance. Beside that, I have a TRS jack. It has three sections, the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. They look very, very similar, but if it has three sections like this, it's balanced, which means that you can theoretically run it for up to 1,000 feet with little to no audio degradation. Another example of a balanced audio connector would be an XLR cable. Now, an XLR jack and a quarter inch TRS jack, they both go on the same cable. The magic really is in the balanced audio cable compared to an unbalanced audio cable. So you can build cables and adapters without needing things like a transformer if you're going from a TRS quarter inch jack to an XLR cable. We're going to show you what all this means as we get into it. What you need to know is if you're running a short distance, you can use either option. If you're running a long distance or if you're in a studio environment, try to use one of the balanced solutions that we show you in this video. Next, let's talk about how this all works. First of all, if you look at the back of the Scarlett 2i2, you can see that there's just a left and a right output. There's no separate output for a subwoofer. This is typical and it doesn't mean that the Scarlett 2i2 is limited or different than a lot of other audio interfaces in this category. How this works is we're going to take all the signal out of the Scarlett 2i2, we're going to put it into the subwoofer, and then the subwoofer has a built-in crossover. What that crossover does is it knows where the crossover or the split between the devices will happen. We can set that. I'll show you in a minute. And then it sends an audio feed along to your left and right studio monitor. So you can think of the subwoofer as the brains behind the whole operation. It's going to distribute everything for us the way that we want it. Let's take a look at that crossover. Now on the back of the subwoofer here, you can see that you can set the crossover. So if we set it to 80 hertz, which is the factory recommended for this particular set of speakers, and I'd say most small studios should have their crossover around 80 hertz, then that's how we can set that. If you want a higher crossover, then you can go up to 120 hertz. This will extend the range of the sub up a little bit more, and it'll turn down the low driver of the top studio monitors so they're doing less down in the 80 to 120 hertz range. And then you can bypass it as well, which will send the full signal up to the top speakers. But generally, if you want a balanced mix, set your crossover to 80 hertz or whatever the factory recommended setting is for your particular set of studio monitors. Okay, so the first way that we're going to connect the 2i2 to the subwoofer and then to the studio monitors is by using an unbalanced TS to RCA jack. I would use this if your only option on the back of the subwoofer is RCA. If you don't have balanced quarter inch or XLR inputs on the back, which some don't, some just have RCA, then this is the solution for you. Let's get started. So we're going to take the unbalanced quarter inch jacks, plug them into the back of the 2i2. Red is right always and black or white is left. And then we can plug the RCA cables into the back of the subwoofer.
Now, if you look where I plugged this RCA cable into the back of the subwoofer, you'll see that the top is in for the right side, and the top is in for the left side, and right below that, there's an out, which will pass through to our other studio monitors. Let's connect those now. In order to make that connection, we just need a standard RCA to RCA cable here. Okay, once we've made that last connection from the subwoofer to the outer two speakers, we can power the speakers on. Now we can give it a test. So you can hear there that the whole system is working correctly. This is method number one. For method number two, we can take the balanced TRS outputs on the back of the Scarlett 2i2 and connect that to the TRS inputs on the back of your subwoofer. Now in this video today, the Atom Audio does not have TRS inputs, but other speakers from other brands like Yamaha or other brands do have balanced TRS inputs on the back of them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to method three and the exact same principles will apply, except method three is just a little bit different than what I just discussed by using just a plain old balanced TRS cable. Now for method number three, we're gonna take the balanced TRS outputs of the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 and we're gonna connect that to an XLR input on the back of this subwoofer. In order to do that, we have a couple of these cables here. What these do is they have a male balanced TRS jack on one end and on the other end, they have a male balanced XLR jack. Now, I prefer to get these in short little runs here so I don't have to worry about how long I need. And then I just connect an additional XLR cable from the end of this jack to wherever I need to go. So this run is a little bit short for this, so that's what I'm gonna do. First of all, let's connect both of these jacks to the back of the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. On the jack that's connected to the left output of the 2i2, I'm gonna connect a white XLR cable just so I can keep track of everything. It's nice to get colored XLR cables for stuff like this, makes it easy to find what you're doing. Next, I'm gonna connect a red XLR cable to the second jack that we installed into the 2i2 to give us a red cable. Next, we can connect both of these to the back of the subwoofer. Just like we did previously with the first method, you can see that I connected that to the input XLR jack. Now, I think it's pretty obvious, we're gonna take another XLR cable, connect it to both of those outputs to the respective speaker. Okay, so we take a look at the whole system here. We have the cable coming out of the back of the 2i2 into the subwoofer, and then from there it gets distributed to the left and right speaker. Everything's powered up, so let's turn it up and see what happens. So there you have it. Everything works exactly as expected. If you are looking for the cables and accessories that we use in this video, we do have links down in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.